So your Trezor Model T has arrived and you're excited to set it up? Well, we're excited to show you how. Welcome back to Woodland Pools. Today, let's take a look at how to set up the Trezor Model T from scratch. We'll go through the whole process from unboxing it to setting up your favorite cryptocurrencies. We made a video just like this almost two years ago at this point and is by far our most popular video to date. But one of the biggest differences between then and now is when we first filmed that video, the Trezor Suite had just come out and was only available in a limited fashion as a web client. But fast forward to today and there's now a fully featured desktop version of the Trezor Suite, which makes both setting up your Trezor and managing your cryptocurrencies that much easier. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so first step, let's get this plastic off of here. Okay, let's open this up, slide that out, put this here. Oh, so it's a nice little box here, the safe place for your coins. So now lesson learned from when I did this last year and I just ripped open the box. This actually has a really nice clean opening. Right here is like a little tab and if you just lift it like this, it just opens right up. And here we go, we see our Trezor Model T. And this little box on the side here, this tab says pull. So let's go ahead and pull this up and we'll see what's this little box here. So this little box is gonna have our important accessories. Okay, we have some stickers and stuff, getting started guide. This is the cable you're gonna use to connect your Trezor Model T to your computer. And this is really important. These are the pieces of paper for our recovery phrase. Hold on to these, we're gonna be using these in just a second. So now all that's left in our box is the Trezor itself and our quick getting started guide. So if we look at these steps here, first is connect our Trezor to our computer, then go to Trezor io slash start after we follow those instructions then we can sleep tight and real quick before we get to that you can see here that the treasure comes with a holographic tamper proof sticker so what happens is when you remove this it's going to deliberately leave some marks behind and so you can see here on the box it says if the hologram seal cover on the usb port is damaged or missing contact treasure.io slash support so it's very important that this holographic seal should still be completely intact and on your device and so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and peel this off and now that i've peeled it you can see that tamper evidence left behind that shows that the sticker was on there but it was pulled off. So now we remove the sticker, go ahead and plug your Trezor Model T into your computer. We'll do the same and then we'll switch to our overhead camera. Okay, so once we plug in our Trezor, the first thing we're gonna see is it says welcome and go to trezor.io slash start to get started. So here we are on trezor.io slash start. So now the whole point of the Trezor is that your private keys are securely controlled on the device and never leave the device that are only under your control. And also remember that any cryptocurrency that you have like Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Cardano doesn't actually live on your Trezor. Your funds are actually just a balance reflected on the distributed blockchain. It just says on the Cardano blockchain at this address, there's this much ADA sitting there. What's actually on your Trezor are the private keys to sign transactions to authorize to move funds between those different addresses. But that being said, in order to manage your transactions and your balances, you need an actual user interface to interact with. And so for that, we're going to use the Trezor Suite. You could just use the one on the web client, but I highly recommend that you use their fully featured desktop application it's a way better experience. And if you're still kind of confused in terms of where your coins and your keys actually live and how it all works together, I highly recommend that you check out our video where we dug into that in detail. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the desktop application on my Mac. You do the same on your computer. Go ahead and open up the Trezor Suite and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we've opened up our Trezor Suite and here we go, welcome. We'll start off by doing a security check. We checked earlier that the hologram was intact and untampered with. This is very important. You should always buy your Trezor directly from their site and never from a third party. And our package came wrapped in plastic and was untampered with. If something seems off, you can contact support. But if all of that looks good, let's go ahead and set up our Trezor. Okay, perfect. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is install the latest firmware. Anytime you're interacting with your hardware wallet now or moving forward, anytime you plug it in and open up the Trezor suite, if you ever have the availability for a new firmware update, always do that first before you do anything else. This will save you from a whole category of potential problems. So I love that they start us off here. Let's go ahead and install the latest firmware. Okay, we see both on our suite and on our device that the firmware is being installed. So let's let that finish up. Okay, so our firmware installation is complete. Let's click on continue. In this video, we're setting up a brand new hardware wallet. If you're trying to restore or recover a Trezor Model T that you had before, or you're trying to make a backup, check out our video on that. But for us, we're trying to make a new wallet. So let's create new wallet. There's different kinds of recovery phrases you can use. There's the standard one. This Shamir one is a combination of lists of words. It's a lot more complicated and that's more of like an expert mode. For most everybody, a standard setup should be fine. So let's go ahead and click on that. All right, so we're going to confirm on our Trezor. On the device, it says create new wallet. Do you want to create a new wallet? So we're going to click on this little green check mark here. All right, so that is going to load us in and it is processing. Okay, so our wallet is almost ready and now we need to create a backup. This is really, really important. Do not skip this step. I'm not even sure why they even offer the option to skip the backup. So I went ahead and clicked on create backup. And here is where we're going to get our list of words to get our recovery phrase. Okay, so a couple of thoughts on recovery. 
recovery phrases. You're about to be presented with a list of words, and it's important that you understand that those lists of words, the combination of those, is exactly how your private keys on your device are generated. It comes deterministically directly from that list. The other thing that's important to understand is that this list is only generated one time and only shown once right now to you. The security benefit of this is that nobody can guess or hack these words, but the downside of it is that no one, treasure, nobody, can ever provide you with these words again. So that's the double-edged sword of being your own bank. You are in full control of your own funds, but keep in mind that means that you are in full control of your own funds. You need to make sure that you write down this recovery phrase and never lose it. The other piece is that because your private keys are generated directly from here in a deterministic manner, and that the same keys are going to be made every time from the same list of words, if your treasure were to be lost or stolen or damaged, you can always quickly just get your recovery phrase, get a brand new treasure, put it into restore mode, type those words in, and you'll get the exact same set of keys and exact same set of balances. But on the flip side, however, that ease of restoration means that if anybody else were to get access to your recovery phrase, they could also get their own treasure, put it into restore mode, and just type these words in and get full access to all of your funds. So it is critically important that you write down your recovery phrase in multiple places, at the very least on pieces of paper, and have these pieces of paper stored in different secure locations, in some kind of a container that's fireproof and waterproof. If you want to take it one step further, you could store your recovery phrase on a crypto steel capsule or a crypto steel cassette. And if you want to see the differences between these, you can check out our video that goes into detail on that. But for now, we're going to do the setup process on our two pieces of paper, and let's click and confirm that we understand these instructions below. Once we go through this process, we'll be able to check in the device settings and confirm that the recovery phrase used to create this wallet is the one that we have written down. Never take a photo or make a digital copy of this because if somebody hacks your computer or your phone, then they have access to your recovery phrase and they can steal all of your funds. So an offline version, either pieces of paper or stainless steel is the way to go and keep the backup secured and never share it with anybody. So let's go ahead and begin this backup. Okay, caution, never make a digital copy of your recovery phrase and never upload it online. Let's click on I understand. All right, so now here it is going to show us our list of words. You see, you can swipe through them here and you can see them all. So as I mentioned, you don't wanna let anybody see it and you're here looking at ours. This is a test wallet we're going to set up and we're going to delete it right after. So go ahead and swipe through your device and write down all 12 words in order on both pieces of paper. We'll do the same and then we'll go from there. All right, when you've written down all 12 words, it says, I wrote down all 12 words in order and hold to confirm. So let's go ahead and click and hold on this button to confirm. Okay, so now what it's going to do is it's going to ask us to repeat back the recovery phrase to make sure that we wrote it correctly in the right order. So for example, our first word was fog. This is top option here. So I'm gonna click on that. It's asking now for word number six. For us, it was average, the bottom option here. So let's click on that. Now it's asking for word number 12. So keep going through this process for all the words that it asks to make sure that you got it correct and then we'll go from there all right success we have finished verifying our recovery seed let's click on continue and our backup is done use our backup when we need to recover our wallet let's click on continue okay so our wallet backup is complete do not lose your backup or your funds could be inaccessible there is no way to recover a lost backup just like we talked about let's continue to the pin now this pin is going to prevent anybody from being able to just like pick up our treasure and access our funds do not skip this step let's go ahead and set our pin do you really want to enable pin protection yes we'll click on the green check mark and so now we're going to enter our new pin. So go ahead and enter your pin, we'll do the same. Click on the green check mark when you're done. Re-enter your pin to confirm. Click the green check mark when you're done. All right, so processing. Awesome, we've successfully enabled pin protection. Let's click on continue. All right, so here we are in our treasure and then in the treasure suite, the pin has been changed successfully. Let's go ahead and continue. All right, so now we need to activate what coins we want to manage in our treasure suite. You can always add more at any time. Let's go ahead and add Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Cardano. Once you've selected your initial batch of coins that you want to manage, click on Complete Setup, and our setup is complete. Fantastic. We can change the name of our device if we want. Let's call this the Woodland Pools Treasure T. Confirm on our treasure. Okay, great. And if you want later, you can come back here and change your home screen for what your background looks like. But let's go ahead and access the suite. There's another power feature here where you can make a hidden wall We'll make a video on that at some point later, but for now, let's access our standard wallet. Awesome, our wallet is ready to use. So now all we need to do is get some funds onto our wallet. We can buy some directly from the Trezor, or if you have funds on a different wallet, like on an exchange or in a different software wallet, you can now send those over. So let's go ahead and do that. So now keep in mind, for each of your different cryptocurrencies, they all have different kinds of addresses. So you're gonna need to send over your funds for each of them individually to their own respective addresses. And let's show first how to do this for Cardano. So I click on Cardano. 
Cardano. We have no transactions yet, so let's click on Receive ADA. This here is going to be the receive address for this wallet. I want to click on Show Full Address. All right, so here's our address here, and it's asking us to confirm on the Trezor. You're going to see it here on the Trezor. Always make sure that the address that's reflected on your screen matches the one on your device. Your device is the source of truth for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the receive address for Cardano on my Trezor. I'm going to go to either my exchange or my software wallet. In this case, for example, here's a Cardano software wallet that I have. I'm going to type in the address. And what you're going to want to do here is send a test transaction first. Send just the minimum amount that you're allowed to send. Gain some confidence in the process. Make sure it goes through the way you expected. And then once it's come in and everything is working correctly, then you can send the balance. So I'm going to go ahead and just send one ADA from this software wallet. I'm going to confirm. OK, so that is on its way. So now let's come back to our Trezor suite. Uh, let's make sure that we confirm this. OK, great. And let's close out of here. Oh, wow, that was really fast. That was really fast. Our one ADA already came in. So that looks like it's working correctly. So let's go ahead and now we can send the balance. So now if we come back to receive, we can use a brand new address or we can use the one that we had before. I would recommend just use the same address you had before. So if you don't have it copied, you can reveal it again and copy it. So go back to your software wallet, send your remaining balance. We'll do the same and then we'll go from there. Awesome. It looks like the remainder of my balance has come in and my full 50 ADA is here. We come back to our dashboard. We can see we funded our Cardano wallet. If you want to do the same thing for Bitcoin or Ethereum, it's the exact same process and make sure you use the different addresses for each of them and always do the test transaction first. So now that I've funded my Cardano account, I can come to trade and I can buy or sell or swap between different cryptocurrencies straight from the suite. I can receive more if I need to from a different wallet. And if you want to send funds from your wallet to somewhere else, you would click on send, type in the address you want to send it to, how much you want to send. And then when you click on review and send, you'll get on the screen here what you're sending, how much and to where. And then on the device, you'll be able to see the details and confirm your transaction. That's one of the benefits of a hardware wallet is that you always confirm the transaction on the physical device. All right, now home stretch. If you are using Cardano, now that you've gotten your funds onto your wallet, the last thing you're going to want to do is definitely make sure that you're delegating or staking your ADA. That way you can get ADA rewards from the network risk-free to your wallet. Currently, ADA staking rewards are about 4%. It's completely non-custodial. The funds never leave your wallet and you never need to send your ADA anywhere. So to do this, you can delegate directly from the Trezor suite but the only problem with this is that if you click on delegate here, you can only delegate to the Trezor pool. But there are over 3,000 stake pools in the Cardano ecosystem, and you probably want to consider delegating to one of those for multiple reasons. The first of which, you'll probably get better returns. We can see here, this is the Trezor stake pool. And here as an example is our stake pool, the Aspen stake pool. Now something to keep in mind for returns on Cardano is that two of the main factors that affect it are the variable fee that's charged and the amount of pledge that the stake pool operator has brought to the game. Generally speaking, the lower the fee and the higher the pledge, the better your returns. We can see the fee on the Trezor pool is 10% and they have zero pledge staked. And a pool like ours, for example, has only a half of a percent fee and 250,000 ADA staked to the pool. And there are a bunch of stake pools you can choose from, many of them with low fees, high pledge, and good returns. And in addition to better returns, you can also interact with your stake pool operator directly, ask them any questions you have about the pool, Cardano, or cryptocurrency in general. Plus, on top of all of that, you you'll be supporting decentralization of the network. Your stake to one of these community pools not only spreads the ADA out, making the network more resilient, but on top of that, you can support any of these projects that you like by delegating to their pool. For example, this Cardano Explorer, Pool Tool, and this beautiful site, Pool.pm, are all run by community single stake pool operators. So for example, if you love this Pool.pm site, you can delegate to the Smog Stake Pool. Or if you appreciate the work that we do here on our channel, the best way to support it is by delegating to our Aspen Stake Pool. And so if you want to delegate to one of these community stake pools, all you need to do is install a Cardano wallet, and then from there, you're one click away from delegating. Better rewards, direct interaction with your stake pool operator, make the network more resilient through decentralization, and support your favorite Cardano projects. It's a really straightforward process. In the next video, I'll show you how to get that Cardano wallet installed so you can delegate to your preferred Cardano community stake pool. Congratulations on getting your treasure set up. Let me know down below how the process went for you. And if nothing else, we'll see you in the next video.